Hey everyone, Bill Nichols, Bill Nichols TV. Tonight, let's talk Lightroom and using the graduated filter. All right everyone, so tonight, I'm going to go over the usage of the graduated filter in Lightroom and how you can use it to correct images where you have Maybe one layer of something that's much brighter than the other, you wanna bring that down, but across a region, you don't necessarily wanna use a brush because you wanna get a nice graduated effect so that's nice and natural, not a hard line, and you wanna affect you know, a whole region of an image at once. So what this mimics is um, utilizing a graduated neutral density filter, a physical filter. And the way that those work is that you've got um, a filter, it's a piece of glass or a piece of, piece of polyester or something that's been dyed. It has a darker piece up above and a clear piece down below. And those could be different stops or values of light. So you could let in three time or three stops less light up top and all of the light down below. They could have a hard edge or a graduated edge, a nice soft edge. You use those in different areas. So if you're shooting maybe a landscape and you've got some mountains, some hills, some trees, and the sky is much brighter than the foreground, then you could use maybe a three stop graduated ND that has a soft edge. Bring that down into the picture with the filter holder so that your sky is letting in less light than the ground and they can be closer in exposure, or at least to get it to within a range that you could then edit it and pull those back without having to do bracketing and if you want to get just a single shot. Now you might have an ocean image or something that has a really hard horizon and in that case you would use a hard ND that's got a hard line and you could bring that line right down to that horizon and correct that sky for that, you know, the foreground whether that's the ocean or something else. So in this image, this is a image that was shot in Page, Arizona at Lower Antelope Canyon absolutely beautiful place. If you ever get the chance to go, go. You will not regret walking through upper or lower antelope. And overall, the image isn't bad. Um, some things that I love in here, I love, I'm gonna use my Wacom tablet here. You can use your mouse and follow along, whatever. But I love the purple hues that are in here, the oranges, the yellows that are up here. But a couple of things that bug me, and really just one main one, is that this kind of whole top quarter of the image is really you know, kind of blown out, and it had to be blown out in this one image because I didn't have time to set up and use graduated filters at all or to use a neutral density filter to change that exposure so that I could get the lower right. So this down here, this looks exposed nice. Maybe it's a little bit hot right here, but up above this is really hot. So there's a couple of things that I could do. Um, if I wanted, I could just grab a brush and say bring the exposure down. You know, and this is a pretty good sized brush. Come down here to brush size. I want there to be a decent feather on here. So now you can see it's nice and soft. I could come in here you know, with a brush and paint this in so that it's a little bit less. And then come over here you know, and change my adjustments so I could bring the exposure down more. Yeah, and that's helpful. Um, but I would have to do this over that whole area and to get a good consistent look would be really difficult. So instead, I'm going to mimic using a graduated filter. And I'm gonna do that with this graduated filter. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click the graduated brush filter or the graduated filter. Um, I can use it as a brush or I can use it as a regular filter. And right now by default, everything is zero. So I'm not going to really see anything. So to demonstrate what this is going to do, I'm going to drop the exposure down by about four stops. And I'm just going to draw this out. So I'm going to hold down shift so that I get, I can draw this in any angle that I want or any direction. If I hold down shift, I'll get a completely horizontal selection here. And that's really what I want here because this is shot pretty much straight on. And I want the gradation to happen in this horizontal fashion. So I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to hold down shift and just pull it down. Now you can see I've changed it by four stops. So as I come down, I'm affecting the image. And basically, the way that this is going to work is up at the top, it's all of it. And it's going to come down to this bottom. So in the middle, it's at 50%. And then this bottom line, it's no longer affecting it. So anything below this bottom line isn't affected by the filter and anything above this top line is affected 100% by the filter. So I've brought that down four stops. Clearly that's not very natural looking. But I just wanna show you here, I can bring it down and that line is four stops all the way across. Now a couple things about this, I can adjust the distance between these and as I do, the spread of that gradation is going to be greater. So if I wanted to mimic a hard ND physical filter, I could bring these lines closer together like this and you'll see how hard that line is. So that line just stops very abruptly. 
Now I'm, I wanna have a nice smooth gradient here. So I'm gonna grab these lines. I'm gonna hold down shift so I keep it straight. I'm gonna pull them down so that they really are quite far apart. Um, I want there to be some distance here. Okay, so there we go. So now I can see the bottom here is lightening up. I'm gonna actually make the distance a little bit less because I like kind of this lower half of the image as it is. I really just wanna affect the top here. So I'm not gonna bring it down by four stops, but now I've got this filter open and I've got all of my tools available here. So all of the controls on this filter, I can change the temp, I can change the tint, the exposure, the contrast, the highlights, the shadows. So let's zero out exposure. Let's just show you some of the different things that you can do. So I can bring the highlights just all the way down and you can already see that that makes a big difference. Those Exposures up there now, I haven't had to change the exposure of the image at all. And I've brought a lot, back, a lot more detail back there. In the same way, in the shadows that are up there, I can change the shadows and add light to those, or I can bring them down so that they're darker. I actually like them up just a little bit. I'm gonna add just a little bit to the shadows. It takes away a little bit of detail, but we're gonna add that back in with some contrast. So if I grab the whites, it's going to take what's just pure white and bring that down. So I can bring that down and you can see those go a little bit muted. I'm not gonna mess with that. And same thing with the blacks, I can make the blacks much more punchy or I can bring them away. I can change the clarity here so I get more detail in that area. And again, when I'm adjusting the clarity right here, it's not adjusting the clarity on the entire image, it's adjusting the clarity through that graduated filter and for an amount of how much that filter is applied. So if I change clarity, the amount that's changed down here is much less than what's changed up here. So I wanna keep that in mind. In saturation, I can change saturation here so I can make it much more saturated. And actually, I like that look a little bit. We won't go to 100, but we'll come back to there. And then sharpness and noise. There's really not any noise in this image. It's shot at ISO 100. Um, two seconds long at F16. The sharpness is fine. Like if you get in here, you know, you can see, you know, just I don't really want to make it any sharp, sharper. You can see all of the sand that's here on the sandstone. And I don't need to worry about defringing. Now color. I can change the color that's affected through there. And you'll see like if I go to, let's make the purples a little more pronounced. And then change the saturation. So you can see I can bring more purple in. I kind of like that. So we're gonna mess with that a little bit as well. All right, so let's actually clear that out. Um, let's just bring that saturation down to nothing. So now we've got nothing on the color selected. So we're just gonna mess around in here with this and I'll tell you what I would do. So I would definitely bring the highlights down, right? So I want more detail in there. And even though I've got that detail back in the highlights, it is still overexposed for there. So I'm gonna bring that exposure down a little bit. This is gonna affect my histogram some. So now you can see what was clipped on the right-hand side is pure white, is now over a little bit. And then it's all kind of squashing a little bit more. This is a much better looking histogram. And right now, if I was just to say done on this filter, and let's just reset this image, there's the beginning. There it is with just a very quick uh, neutral or graduated filter adjustment. We can click on here and see what we did. All that we did was we brought the exposure down by 0.63, so that's two thirds of a stop. We brought highlights down by 71. So I like the look of this. Now what I will generally do is go in here and kind of mess with the position and see how this looks. So as I bring it down, you can see how the top isn't changing. That's because it's already 100%. All the way to this line, it's 100% applied. So what's up here in this yellow, this isn't gonna change. This is really just changing the bottom part. And I kinda like what it's doing there. So um, I do like the brightness though in this cove over here to the left. So as I move it up, like I like that brightness in there. I like some of the brightness brought into the sandstone. We can change that by changing this to a brush and I'll show you that before we stop. So now, now let's go in and let's look at the temp. So we can see that we've got some reds some purples in here, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna move the tent over a little bit and just bring those out some. Yeah, so like that. So if I go all the way to the right, that actually doesn't look terrible. Um, doesn't look too unrealistic. I'm gonna bring that about midway through and let's see if we add some blues in there. So maybe bring that tent down a little bit, cool it off just a little bit, and then add some magenta in there. I think that looks great. So let's reset the image really quick. So we've gone from there to there. You know, still a nice, you know, pretty realistic looking image. You're getting a little bit more of a sunset feel here. So if there's a sunset going on in the sky, you're dropping that into here. And let's see if we add some clarity. So if we add too much, it's just not gonna look realistic at all. We can add just a little bit. 
Dehaze I really don't mess with unless there's fog or something. Um, I'll explain later on in another video what Dehaze does and show you a good example, you know, how to use it. And let's just mess around with saturation here. So I could mute it, right? I could make it almost black and white. Or I could make it really overly punchy. That's not realistic at all. Let's zero it out. And then let's just bring it up just a little bit and see if we like it. So I actually do like that. So let's close that filter out. So there's our image right now. So let's hit reset and then bring it back. And then that looks a lot better. Now the one area that I still wanna work on, you do get a little bit of a glow from it here, but do you see this right here? I wanna add a little bit of light in here. So what I'm gonna do is click on that graduated filter. And I see it here. I'm gonna to switch to a brush. So now what I can do is I can add that graduated filter wherever I want or I can take it away. So here's my brush. I'm gonna hit option, make it a delete. Way too much of a feather, way too big of a brush. So I'm gonna come down, make my brush size smaller. I'm gonna make my feather smaller. I'm gonna leave the flow at about 80. So, and then I'm gonna turn off auto mask because I'm in this landscape and um, auto mask isn't always really great on landscapes. But the reason I turn my flow down is um, if I have flow at 100%, it applies it all the way. If I bring the flow down a little bit, it gives me a little bit more room to have some forgiveness there. And I'm just gonna paint this, so I'm gonna actually make the brush smaller, that's still too big. Let's go in here, I'm just gonna paint this filter away. So now I've got my graduated filter applied there, applied across this horizontal plane, but I've removed it from one area. So if we turn that off, now let's just undo that. You can see there it was before, there it is after. I like that a little bit more. Again, it's preference here. And I could maybe paint it away actually up top here as well. So let's go back into the brush. Let's select the filter, take it into brush. And maybe I wanna paint it away just here, just give this a little bit more light. I could do the same thing by doing another adjustment brush and adding some highlights or adding some exposure here, but the exposure is already there. I wanna bring it back to kind of the state before I applied this, you know, this gradient there. Just a little bit. I wanna actually make it, let's make this a little, whoop, undo that. Let's make this a little bit smaller again. So I can just go um, right along this edge. And all that I wanna do is just add a little bit of light right back in here. So I just get a little bit of depth, not too much. I kind of overdid it there. Let's come back in here and paint that back in. There, so now not too much of a change. Just you can see, I get a little bit more depth here. So a little more shape to it. I added some light back in here and then the shadows are here. Then just a little bit along here. Let's take a look at that. Let's reset the image where we started. Let's go back. Now we did all that with one tool, a graduated filter. And then, um, and that was basically it. We didn't go and affect the entire image because the exposure through most of the image was pretty good. So with that one image, we affected the tone, we affected the color, we affected some saturation, we affected the highlights, um, a little bit on the shadows. We did a little bit of selective filter here with the brush and brought that back. But that's it, it took one filter to take this image from being a good image to what I think is a much better image by bringing some detail back. Graduated filters are fantastic tools and you can just think of them as a, um, as a virtual replacement for physical filters. Although I'd much rather shoot with a physical filter, get the image very close to this and then come in and do some touch up work. If this was five stops off or whatever, I would have tried to bring that down and I would have got some really serious banding and some issues. So luckily this was only about two thirds of a stop off. So if I have an image where it's a very bright sky but it's beautiful and then maybe the foreground is very dark, then I wanna throw a physical filter in there, darken down that sky some, um, boost up that, boost up that ground maybe by affecting my ISO or more likely in a landscape affecting the shutter speed. So I'd probably slow the shutter down, which would make the sky brighter, but I could throw that filter in there, bring the sky down, get it to a point like this, then bring it into Lightroom and finish the edit there. So um, thanks guys for watching. Uh, an overview on the graduated filter. If you have any questions, ask below. I'm gonna be doing a giveaway this week, announcing it. So subscribe below so that you get all the notifications. I've been on a little bit of a crazy schedule between going to Enerdrone, having our newborn who is now six weeks old. She's amazing. 
absolutely exhausting. Amazing little girl, but so exhausting. So my schedule's been off a little bit. I'm getting back in the flow of things. So starting this week, I will have new videos every week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. For this next couple of weeks, I'm gonna figure out what those are going to be, if they're going to be subjects on each Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But for now, I will have videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then you can just consider if I have ones on Tuesdays and Thursdays as bonus videos, but I wanna let you guys know. So I'm one trying to get back into a regular cadence. Thank you so much for watching, for spending the time and interacting. I love the interaction. So subscribe below. Tell me what you think. If you have any questions, any comments, I respond to everybody. So please reach out and uh, you guys have an awesome week and I will talk to you soon. You keep watching. I'll keep making videos. Thanks a lot.